Hello, welcome to some of the solutions to in-class problems from our first week in Modern Algebra, Math 302 here at Cal State Fullerton. So uh, in this first problem, well, it looks like number two, but uh, number one was just a question asking you to introduce yourselves to each other in class, so we'll skip that one. Um, we're asking for the cardinalities of the following sets. And uh, so there's there's five different sets here, and, and you're, you're going to see some ones that look very similar, but we, we have to distinguish between uh, elements in a set and subset, or rather sets, that are elements of a set. Okay, and, that's, and we're going to see that, for instance, when we look at A and D, this is going to be a very uh, big difference. So this first set, note, this is uh, the Z, which stands for Zollen, by the way, right? So Z is Zollen, which is the German word for number, uh, the, this is the set of integers. Okay, so the set of integers and the cardinality, which we denote with absolute value bars. And you might say, well, why are we denoting cardinality with absolute value? What does that have to do with absolute value? Well, if you define absolute value of a number uh, in a way maybe slightly different than what you'd seen uh, in school, so uh, the way I like to think of the absolute value of a number x, right, this is the distance between x and 0. All right, so whenever you take the absolute value, you could be just saying, well, this is the, the distance between whatever's inside the absolute value and 0. Obviously, if it's a positive number like 7, well, that's 7 away from 0. But if it was a negative number like negative 4, you say, well, that's 4 away from 0. Oh, okay, and that's why the negative one away, because distance, right, we treat as a non-negative quantity. Well, what does that have to do with this problem? Well, when I use the absolute values, I'm basically asking, how far away is this set from having no elements at all? And the answer is, well, with the integers, infinitely far away, right? There's an infinite number of, of integers. Okay, now let's just jump ahead to D for a moment, though. So here we have a set containing the set of integers. All right? And the key here is that when we do a set as an element of another set, you can't see inside. The elements of this set, or and the well, the element of this set, is the set itself. Not the elements inside of it, but the set itself. So in this case, if we want to know what is the cardinality of the set whose elements are, well, there's just one element whose element is the set of integers, this is one. It's one element away from being the empty set, from having no elements at all, and so that's why the cardinality here is one, not equal to infinity. All right? So put another way, let's say I have the number two. Two is an element of the set of integers. But 2 is not an element of the set whose element is the set of integers. Now, I mentioned the absolute value here basically be measuring how far away are you from having no elements from being the empty set. And hey, that's part B, right? So how far away is the empty set away from being empty? Well, it's none away. It is empty, right? The empty set, you'll recall, has exactly zero elements. All right, how about this union in part C? Well, when we do the union, we get all of the elements which are in one or the other set, but do remember that when you write these down, if I write down one, two, three, five, five, and six, right? I'm just writing every single element here. This five occurs twice, and a set, can't see that. Remember, a set is a collection of non-equal elements. All right? So this is actually the same thing as 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Okay? So you remember, those are two important things when we write down a set. The order of the elements, then when we write it down as a list, doesn't matter. And any duplications automatically disappear, right? I mean, not all of them, but all but one of them. All right, and so the cardinality is just how many elements are in this set? How far away is this from being empty? The answer is one, two, three, four, five, five elements. Okay, uh, finally, 
we have the set down here, which is, this is related to part D. It is a set that contains as elements one, two, three different sets. So the cardinality of Z, Q, R, which by the way, right, we already know Z is a set of integers. Q, which you could think stands for quotient, right? This is the set of rational numbers, so the fractions. And then R, that's the set of real numbers, okay? Um, so this set has three elements in it, right? What, what's the first element, right? Well, first element here, the set of integers. Second element, a set of rationals. Third element, a set of reals. Now I'm saying first, second, third, like there's an order. Of course there's not, right? Sets don't care about order. Now there's a follow-up question, right? Is pi an element of the set? And in class, a lot of people said yes, because pi is a real number. They said, well, it's not an integer, and it's not rational, but it is real. But remember, the elements of this set are not the elements of z, q, and r. It is z, q, and r. So pi is an element of the set of real numbers. Pi is not an element of the set that contains the set of integers, the set of rationals, and the set of real numbers. All right, hopefully this clears up some confusion.